And I am back to my underground village to once again use the suggestions and advice you, my faithful subscribers, have given me to improve, well, everything. In this episode of Going Medieval Let's Play, shells will be added, just like in the other playthrough, and stockpile priority controls will be used extensively to fix food and wood deliveries and pickups, as well as all the other resources. Doors will be left open to test out settler speed when going through them, and how the thermodynamics of rooms will be impacted by this. I will again learn something new about the game and showcase that to you. This time that being that there are not two temples, but rather a chapel and a temple in this game. It was a true revelation moment for me there. <laughs> a new settler will wander in and after thinking it through I will let him join my village, but at the cost of getting raided by a master archer and his band of bow brothers, backed up by a butt naked raider with a face mask. I'm not sure where the game is going with this one, but let's find out. And now back to the staircase of Doom playthrough. Here we are at the end of summer and soon going to hit autumn. Down here I have a lot of work to be done when it comes to stockpiles, their priorities and setting up shelves. Everything you have told me in your comments in my previous episode. So I'm going to deal with that as soon as some of my villagers are freed up after having all of these digging and building jobs and all the properly holding ones that I have already set up. I'm going to start moving things around with shelves but I can do the stockpile priorities right now. First and foremost, I want wood, as I said in the previous episode, to be right here next to my kitchen. And we can see here that there is a default stockpile here, which allows the material, wood and sticks to be collected here, but it has a low priority. And as you said, that was my mistake. Now I'm going to move this to very high, because this is one of the first things that I want to be stocked with wood. Second of all, here is a small stockpile and as we can see it has lavish meals on it even though it doesn't allow meals. And as one of you have said and your name is up here on the screen right now, I should now move this priority up to very high and that way food that comes up here but it's not even allowed to be here and this is a very high priority so they should clear it from here onto here. Now you did say I should go with low priority and I'll try that as well. So because they keep leaving food here. I'll do a small stockpile here, I'll switch to clear all, so basically nothing there, and low priority. When they are making this and it falls here, it should have no priority and no place here and should be moved by a hauler from here over here to this main stockpile for food, which is now at very high and it can hold the food when it comes to meals, all of them, and then the raw food as well. Second of all, this one over here is for caucuses it seems to be holding on to some leather and that is probably and mostly because over here where I do want leather and that should be this one textiles it is low priority and it should go to very high and that means this one which was low priority and had these things should now be freed of them and those things should go onto the stockpile that's supposed to hold them. Now we'll follow up with this and see if it is working so far they aren't obeying this but it's a new setup and there we go, somebody did actually obey this. So once again, thank you my subscribers for excellent advice and ideas. Let's go and see how have they finished with all the digging. Well, almost all, not everything. I'm not going to add more construction because I always do that and then do not have time for other jobs. And what are those other jobs that I want to do? Well, building shelves. Up here I don't want anything, so we are gonna go down. For example, in the food basement over here, there is plenty of room here next to these walls. And you can see here that I dug some like entrances to the future room, so that's not where the shelves are going to be. And I could put the shelves actually in these rooms on the side, because this is all a big kitchen and kind of a great hall, but it isn't. It's just a dining room, so to speak. And it's temperature currently. Actually, I'm going to use the trick you told me in the comments. So it's 2 degrees here, and it matches up to, if I were to click here, it also says 2 degrees. So if I just put my mouse here and look above, it says 2 degrees and it's an easy way to check the temperatures. And then there are 2 degrees here, 2 degrees here, so everywhere here is 2 degrees. So I could simply put the shelves in these rooms, but the food, it's not going to be exactly here, but I could at some point actually close off this area and then turn this into, whoa, jailbird. Alfred didn't stop looking over his shoulder, but it was the bleeding wheels around... Bleeding what? Wheels? Wells? Wheels, walls, walls, around Alfred's ankles that gave him away as a prisoner on the run. Would you conceal him? May they may have been followed. The settlers slammed the door shut. They would get a negative mood modifier. 
Last Dance inhabitants decide to help him. And let's see... Oh, you cheeky developers, they've changed this. Yeah, I saw this in the patch notes, just haven't had the time to check it out. So, you can see now that background has him as a confident armor smith, meaning that he probably has a good smithing skill, as you can see at 20. But we can also see he has mining at 4, some tailoring double stars, intellect double 1 star and carpentry 1 star, but we cannot see his other stats. Now I am in a pickle. Do I take this person or not, especially considering that I will be attacked because of him? It's gonna be an attack by one master forest bandit archer, three adept forest bandit archers and four forest bandits. So should I risk this or not just to get one more villager? Well, let's risk it. I'm going to help him and let's see what did I get. No, contemplative. Ah, the worst kind. I should not have taken you in. Move target minus 20, move change speed plus 5. At least he has an iron stomach, so that's a bonus. Let's see what did I get for his skills. 12 marksman. Okay, I can work with that. 20 smithing, tailoring 9 with double stars, that's useful. And intellectual 6, don't really need that, carpentry at 7 with the star. And you have culinary construction, well you have the basic skills, so that's good. Medicine I don't even need you to have, melee I don't need you to have. Speechcraft, excellent, no points wasted here, because this skill isn't even in the game yet. So, all in all, it could have been worse, it could have been better, but the enemies will come here at about two days so it's going to be interesting to see but he will be able to help with the defense let's just see do i need to heal him perhaps yeah bruised chest the dislocated shoulder and it's interesting he doesn't even have any ankles or anything here i thought he would have actual ankle bracelets or something considering he's a prisoner but nothing okay so we'll take him in and we'll arm and armor him to defend against the raider attack which is now imminent but okay let's see where i was before of this interruption oh yeah i was thinking about how to set up this room so as i said i could make this a grand hall take all the food to shelves over here and here but i think that's going to spend some time because they will have to move to these parts over here and i am questioning what will the temperature will be here once i close this off with the door well there is only one way to test this, so let's try it out. I'm going to place a door here and I will put some shelves in. Let's see over here and let's see over here. So two shelves and a door and I will see what the temperature is going to be like in a few days. And then I'll see whether or not am I going to move all my food over here and over here. And yeah, here is the library currently, but it might become another food stash later on when I move the library to somewhere else. So let's speedrun at 1. I know you are probably annoyed that I go so slowly in my let's plays, but I'm kind of the person who likes to min-max things and going at speed 1 allows me to do so. Talking about min-maxing, this place is done, it's very small, compact, and it's the Church of Restitutionist Chapel now. So I'm going to have lots of bonuses because of that. Did you go to the church? Enter the Church of Restitution minus 2. So this is probably somebody who was working in here creating something and then got the minus because she's not of that religion but somebody maybe somebody got a bonus because they were praying at the church and i was saying that i need this build so i won't add any more jobs besides those at the moment i should have enough rooms for all my settlers currently 11 12 13 and i have how many villagers oh let's not have to count them 13 so that's actually as many settlers as i have rooms apparently so I will definitely need new rooms. That, well, I won't need them right now. I doubt that a new settler will be here anytime soon. So let's see about Alfred. He is now going to eat. And then he is going to sleep and somebody needs to take care of his health. Sarah maybe? Yeah, 20. So yeah, you'll go and prioritize any wounds to him. And that should take care of his wounds hopefully in the next day or so before the attack. Now... As I wait for this to be done and see what's the temperature going to be before I move the food, there are some other stockpiles I need to take care of. For example, this one, which contains apparel and warfare, needs to go to high. Over here, why do I have iron ingots at a place for textiles? Because I was deconstructing some weapons and armor and it just fell there? I suppose I can even leave it there because I will be using this workstation and it does spend some iron so let's not waste their time moving this and just let them keep the iron ingots here 
let's say this is a high priority. I think this person has the worst kind of, yeah, flimsy. So I will need another wool clothing, but do I have enough? I have 105 leather and 200 linen clothing. Yeah, I have far more linen in this playthrough than the other. So wooden clothing, wool clothing for winter shouldn't be a problem. Manage, so this looks like sturdy leather. This is sturdy and this is flimsy. So I need three in total, three new ones. And this is two, so up to three. Dismantling is currently number one, but actually this should go as number one priority. What else? Yeah, have they done this? So the door is in and this room is now 2.9 degrees while this one is 2.4. So it's definitely an increase in temperature because now this room is smaller and as you know, larger rooms have lower temperature, but it's not a big difference. So I'm happy with this. Here we go, autumn and winter later. So these rooms should have low temperatures. Okay, so just food and no raw food, just meals. So no raw food, no textiles, no medicine. And we'll go with highest priority, very high priority. And we'll drop this priority over here to let's say, well, we'll leave it at very high because it will have all the raw ingredients for food. And these things will hold our food that's for eating. I'm going to add more shelves. This is a great size of room for this. So I can have shelves going like this. So that's going to hold all my food. Well, here I'm going to leave as raw ingredients and turn this most likely into a grand hall. So the kitchen here, ingredients here, eating here for a boost, taking food from here. Maybe they could take the food at the back entrance. Yeah, I'll see if they're not wasting too much time going through here and I'll add a back door if necessary. So that will be done in a jiffy. And over here, I wanted to make the second temple because that would provide me with a good boost and it doesn't take that long to do. So I'll need to add some supports first. What was my plan? To go like this? No, this does not look good. I can leave this pillar in. Yeah, I think it can be worked like that. It's not the prettiest site. I mean, I could try and do this differently. Let's see if I were to dig this one and then have another one go from here to here leave this in and then have this one over here. I guess that could work as well. Yeah, so that should be stable. I'll have them dig this and then finish this as a small. Well, if that was the restitutionist. Oh yeah, the object is the shrine and it's a chapel. I keep telling you it's a temple, but it's actually a chapel. Huh, my bad then. And I do need an Oak Brethren shrine over here. Once they've dug this out and I can do this. So let's leave them at that. Let's see about the latest addition to my gang. So medicine, definitely not. Convalesce high, marksman definitely. Actually that was hunting, so yeah, but he's a good marksman, so why not? Construction, sure. Botany, eh, not so much. Leave mining to others. Botany, okay. Culinary, sure, why not? Smithing, definitely high. So 24 and him at 20, that's good. Carpentry, not that important for you. Tailoring, yeah, definitely, considering I only have one other tailor and you have double stars, so you can le learn quickly. Intellectual, no need, and yeah, you should haul and be a steward. Now, one other tip that I have heard is that to prevent your villagers from being slowed down by doors, as you can see what's going to happen right here, you can set them to keep open and a steward will keep these doors open, but the temperature apparently will not change. It seems that the game is programmed in such a way that even though this room is very high temperature and I want to keep this on cool and I leave these doors open, the temperature from here will not travel over here. We'll see if that mechanic holds up to what one of my subscribers have said. And if it does, it's an interesting way to keep things fast and mobile. And better yet, what would really help out here is what if I keep all of these open because they sleep two times a day, meaning that they enter once, exit once, and then multiply that by two. So that's four times they're entering and exit and they are spending a lot of time between these doors. But if the doors can be kept open and yet have the room stay being a separate room, special room, and them not spending time going through these doors, that would actually be a great boost to efficiency of my settlers. Now, of course, I will not be opening this door as that would let the attackers go into my village here. So what have we done here? Oh, this is almost all finished. Excellent. 
So I'm going to copy the settings from here, high priority and food, just the finished food products, not raw food, and then paste it over here to all the finished ones. I almost want to call this place a larder, if I have pronounced that correctly. You guys from US and UK should know best. About up here, I have been planning to move this in autumn and winter, so this will definitely be moved to this room over here. But as I said, I'm going to leave it up here for the moment. They are gathering a lot of good barley. I need to check, is barley by any chance allowed? Oh my god, that's horrible. And I hate when that happens. Barley was allowed to be used for food. And that's actually a big problem. And something I seem to miss during my let's plays. And now I'm fixing this. Hopefully not a whole lot of barley was spent. I want barley to be spent making ale, which I do not really have a lot of. And I will probably run out during the winter. So ale, ale, raffine and ale, raffine. So 13, that is not enough for raffine. But there are some bushes here to be picked. So we might even come up with 20 for a new batch of raw fine. I should have from the previous episode a lot of sticks and wood, and I do. I don't see a lot of trees that have grown up anything bigger than in the previous episode. But there are a few. We have a lot of these villagers taking on barley and should be moved down here. And now this is one of the things that's not very efficient. They are moving the barley all the way here. And then when they're supposed to work up here, they have to bring it up. This is definitely something that I should stop doing. And I could keep maybe barley here, but I'm afraid that this most of it isn't covered. And it's actually collecting the ale, which should be moved over here. So let me just place a new stockpile and then set it up as high priority for type of food stimulants and up here stimulants are not going to be allowed anymore so that should be moved very quickly and i could leave this as a small stockpile for barley let me just see how much of this is covered these here okay so i will shorten this to the size of the ones that are covered and off the rain and use here to choose to allow barley with a high priority and down there i will set barley well i can set barley individually for all over priorities so actually there is a way to do that. I reduce the size of this stockpile by a few of these, let's say like this, and then add a new stockpile, which is going to be just for barley and about medium priority and leave just raw barley. And it should be okay. I do have a lot more shelves here for this. And now I can slowly dislike food from here. So let's start with lavish meals and stew. And then that's gonna get moved to the shelves. Next up, the temple should have been cleared by now and I need to add that wooden beam. And then a doorway, I'm just going to need some. So these are the Oak Brethren wall decorations. Have one over here and let's say one over here. And then I'll need the shrines. That's actually a four. Let's see, one will go here and the other one can go here. And that's about it for this temple. Yeah, I do need to arm this person. Has he finished coalescing and gotten better? Yeah, healing, sleeping, so he should be finally okay. He's actually joyful and well rested. Oh, right, his schedule, so let's copy it like this. And here I do have a small issue that I haven't fixed. I haven't given them leisure time just before bedtime so that they would actually be close to their beds as their bedtime approaches. And then I'll reduce the amount of leisure time they have Let's say like this, so that it isn't leisure time right next to another part of leisure time. That should be the new schedule and it should be okay. But I will need to switch it because now that colder weather is coming, they should work from 8 to 19 when it's the warmest and then sleep during the night when it's coldest. But as I said, I do have some other things that I need to take care of first. How much are you going to sleep? Yeah, okay. Simply, I will take you. And then I need to switch your clothing. So this is 30, it doesn't really go up in a quality level so much, but it's better than what you have. So flimsy down, sturdy on. Let's see, do I need to manage you? I do need to tell you to take a range weapon and no shield. You could have headgear if you find a helmet. And then no armor, all food, all stimuli. You need a bow. Do I have a bow? Actually, I do have a good crossbow for you. 
Let's say I equip you with that. And you could use a headgear. Actually, this one is seven. Uh, no, wait, 10. Excellent, good leather helmet. So you should be still having the negative mood modifier from the bad clothing, ugly appeal, yeah. But in any event, this temple, is it an, oh, so inside an Oak Brethren temple. So this is a temple, but this is a chapel. Oh, I see now. So one is a chapel and the other is a temple. I really need to remember that. The attack is coming, let's see, in 14 hours. And that means at 1900 hours I'll be attacked and they will be fully rested for that attack. You're okay when it comes to that. Since they are going to be attacking me with archers, I need to think about how to prepare for that. I do have this spot here for my archers and I don't really have many of these wooden marrow lines to protect them. Yeah, I should be able to increase the size of this thing and then add some marrow lines for defense on both sides. So hopefully that will offer some protection. Let's see which material to use. Yeah, definitely wood. So I'll add wood marrow lines here and on this side. And we'll see how much is that going to help me out when it comes to all those range raiders that are going to attack me. There was a master on that list. Let's see how the food is going. It's been moved. So that's excellent. A roasted meat needs to be deselected to clear this up. There is plenty of room, but I want to keep this as food only. So I will leave the herbs and barley and raw food and healing kits here. Let's see about the doors. Yeah. All the doors are now set to be open. So let's follow them and see how do they travel now. Do they speed up? Yeah, they do. Well, they don't speed up, but they no longer slow down. So that is an excellent tip. This has not gone up in temperature, even though the doors are open. So this is a great tip, even though it defies thermodynamics a little bit. So all the doors underneath here are going to kept be kept open. And my villagers no longer will be slowed down when moving between these rooms. I should probably increase the quality of the door that's here. So this one is a wooden door, has 120 hit points. Can I build anything better than that? A better one are the grated door with 300 hit points and has no cover effectiveness, but that's okay. So it only has a little bit of a higher cover effectiveness when closed. This pretty much means that I will just get a higher amount of hit points if I switch these doors. Considering I'm getting attacked by archers, I don't really think I have to worry about them trying to go below ground. They'll be attacking my archers over here. Oh, and this is done. I could have done one more here just to finish off this thing. I didn't do the corners with the corner one, but I'll leave that for some other time when I have more free time. Oh, this definitely needs to be deconstructed because there's a temple and a shrine now below ground. This mature can be cut down. So let's see, how much time do we have left? Seven hours to prepare for the attack. My folks are sleeping and I need to armor them because I took all their armor off in order to speed them up. And let's start off with this person. Now he is going to be at the front lines and should wear some good armor. Let's go with a sturdy helmet. Let's see, where do I have something good for you? Yeah, these armors left over from the other raiders are really at low quality. Okay, so you can go back to bed now. Let's wake up somebody else. You definitely need a body armor. I'm not even sure, am I going to achieve much with such beautiful body armor? Something is better than nothing. Let's see you. Let's go two, two, yeah. I'm keeping the good Lin Garbsons for the archers because I think they'll get exposed to enemy fire the most in this oncoming attack. And the last villager gets this piece of armor. And that's it, I think. So who's unarmored? Unarmored is one melee fighter, second, third, fourth, and one ranged. That is unfortunate, but hopefully in this next wave, I will gather some more armor from the enemies. Let's see if I can just have somebody get something else. This one has good hit points. So take that, maybe change the bludgeon for something else. So 1.6 out of the 2.2 base. Wait, what? Do you have such horrible melee skills? Yes, you do. Holy. I should have made you a marksman. Drop this, drop this, and go find yourself a bow. What is your marksman? 11? But you have a short bow. Oh, you can definitely go for a long bow. So I think we are better prepared than I would have been a few hours ago. Idle. Hmm, what could I give you to do? Well, yeah, to dig another room. So let's go like this, like this, and like this. I do need you to dig this also, and you need to build this and this. And yeah, you could start building those brewing stations. 
one here, one over here for now, and then I'll add two more. And the enemy attack is imminent. Let's just see where they are going to spawn. And here they come. So I will not be surrendering Alfred, and I'm going to defend him. Let's go, folks. Here they are. So let's see. Okay, a longbow, shortbow, some spears, another longbow. What do... Why is Edward naked? He does have a short bow <laughs> and I'm a face mask, but he is butt naked. Okay, Edward, is that a scare tactic or something? In any event, I think I took this Let's Play a bit longer than I usually like to do. So I am going to leave you this time with this massive cliffhanger to see whether or not I managed to defend my village against this butt naked face mask wearing dude with the short bow and his compatriots. So thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more episodes.